All right, we're talking thinning shears. These are thinning shears. They have teeth on one side, um, blenders, you can call them blenders. This is what I call thinning shears. Um, you can have teeth on both sides. They would cut less hair. There is chunkers. I uh, love these on doodle coats because a lot of people like their doodle coats to look natural. So when I'm finishing a doodle coat, I don't want exactly every hair to be the same length. I do still want it to look uniform, but uh, these accomplish that. These are tools you're probably not going to find um, very easily, but if I had some customers asking about uh, how to use these and, and whatnot, and I don't mind explaining. You go to a hairdresser and you say, thin out my hair. I, I, I'm not a hairdresser, I'm a dog groomer. I don't use my hair, my thinning shears like most hairdressers are probably using it. Um, we use it for blending. I use it sometimes for um, dematting. So if, I, if there was a few hairs in here that were still matted, my brush just wasn't getting through them, and I went in and I specifically went into that mat, I could cut a couple times, because if you notice, it's not like scissors. I could cut a couple times and not cut all the hair off. I cut a few hairs. Um, there's different thinning shears. Some have more teeth, some have less teeth. Um, so I make a couple snips and then I go back in and I brush that area out and I can save some hair. So this is a technique I would use when someone really wants me to save your hair. Now, if I have to do this too much, I warn the customer, I've really had to demat your dog. When I start cutting hair and making different lengths of hair, that in the future is gonna be able, it kind of promotes an area where matting can occur quicker. So you would rather the hair be all one length and silky smooth, no broken ends, but when I'm going in there and using this for dematting purposes, I am breaking hair and making it shorter and longer. And that area can be a cause for future mats quicker. So just realize like when you ask your groomer to, to save as much hair and we do that and we demat and we save and pull and tug and all these knots that are coming out, now that's damaged and it's harder to maintain. So you have to come back to the room quicker or brush them at home. So that's why we try to get you on a schedule where we're not having to do a lot of that stuff. Typically a five to six week schedule is good for most um, dogs. Again, more if they're a curlier coated dog and you, the longer you want the hair, the more maintenance we need. So for all you doodle owners out there that got your doodle this year, <laughs> and you want to keep them cute and fuzzy uh, it's a lot of work and I, get, I bet a lot of clients of mine right now could speak to that I have a lot of doodle clients that when they first started coming in and they wanted to save five six inches of hair that's just nearly impossible for most families um, I would I there's some dogs I have to see every couple of weeks that want especially if that curly coated hair and they want any kind of length, you know who you are. <laughs> we have conversations all the time. And because uh, if you don't, then I'm having to take your dog's hair shorter. And some people don't want the hair shorter. They'd rather have a nice, long, fluffy coat. So we keep them on a really tight schedule. We're in COVID-19 situation. A lot of you guys, when you come back to the shop, um, when we can start up again, we're going to have to do short coats cuts there'll be no debate it'll it'll have to happen it's hair it'll grow back we've let the coats go way beyond uh, salvation <laughs> and uh, we will have to do a cut that it will make your dog comfortable we can get back to on schedule again and rebook you at that time but just know that 
that is going to happen. All of us groomers have been having conversations about how many of, or we call it number 10 or number 10, number seven or number 10 shaves. Yeah. They're, those are short summer cuts. And some of you, that's what you get on a regular basis. And it's not going to affect your life at all. But those of you that are used to your cute fluffy dogs, it'll be okay. My camera stopped recording. I don't know what I was last saying. Cute fluffy coats after COVID-19. We're going to see a lot of shorter coat dogs. It's okay. We're going to need to get them back into shape. We're going to have... An overload of customers wanting to get in. So I'll prepare you now. <laughs> Short coats are going to be in the summer. <laughs> All right, so here's Ella. I'm going to show you some thinning shear techniques. I already explained to that she likes to sit when I try to make her stand. She pancakes is the word. All right, how about? So I already talked about how I would use it for uh, dematting. If there was knots in a tangle that I couldn't get out, for some reason I just I can't get it out with my brush, my comb, it's, it's too much. So I would go in, take that knot, if this were a knot, it's not, and I would, a couple times, not in the exact same spot, a couple different spots, boom, boom. And then I go in and you're gonna, it's gonna take out hair. It's going to cut through that mat a little, but then when you go back with your slicker, it'll allow you to break that up more because you've already broken it up some and cut hair out with the thinners, but without having to take the scissors and cut the knot out. So how would I use it on this coat? Let's see if we can see this. So she has really long leg hair. I keep her leg hair long. So I use my thinners to blend lines. So it's not really a flow. It's not really flowing from this short hair to that short hair right now. So I would go and take my thinners along the top to make it look like that's supposed to naturally flow from this length to that length. You see that? How that made that line flow better. I like to teach grooming with thinners as well. So when a groomer is scared about going in around a face, they're scared they're gonna take a big chunk off and uh, not be able to fix it, which is you know, possible a dog might move on you. But if I go in with thinners, so let's just do her bangs. Thinners will take a lot longer for me to do what I would normally do with scissors because I'm very comfortable with my scissors. But with my new groomers, you go in and you just, you can take a little bit at a time until that line is what you want it to be. She's got some goobers under her eyes I'd like to shave out. This is what a lot of people at home um, you'll be wanting to get goobers out. I've shown a couple of videos on you know bathing with a flea comb and whatnot. This is just a little comb to brush it up. And I take a fairly short blade and get that out of there. But I wouldn't recommend that unless you're very comfortable with clippers and your dog is comfortable with you doing that. I get those out of there. She doesn't have too much problem with staining if I keep that nice and short. And I'm comfortable doing that. That's not something unless you know you are comfortable doing so a lot of times I get people say oh can you just thin out that hair you know you go to your hairdresser and they'd say yeah, I want my hair thinned out thinned out I don't know how hairdressers do it well we don't do that for the reason I mentioned 
earlier about when I go and I demat sections of a leg using my thinners. So I'm thinning out the hair. I am technically thinning out the hair. There's not as much hair going to be left there. But that promotes matting. All that different length hair that I'm leaving under there. Yeah, it kind of looks good on the outside, but everything that's happening underneath. Um, then my lines from, this is very long up here, or down here, and very short up here to, to make it join, to make it look like it's more natural. I would, let's get that tail out of the way, brush that up and start blending those lines. Another important tip when using scissors or using thinners or chunkers or anything, you need to cut in the direction that the hair grows. So best to go top to bottom, like the hair's growing this way, so I'm going to cut this way. Can I cut this way? Yes. It's not as good of technique, but you will see me do it because I can't quite get the angle right um, going down. But never cut straight across hair. You really, you know, a 45 degree angle is about the most you want to do. Um, so when I'm going down the back of a leg, and I'm using sinners or shears, I'm going straight down. If I can't quite get the angle, I might come in at a 45. And I think that's 45. But as soon as I go straight across, you are going to see chop marks. So any of you out there using scissors, using um, whatever you're using, thinners, chunkers, scissors, most of you are going to have scissors. Cut down, straight down. Let's get a pair of straights here. So most of you are going to have a pair of straight kind of scissors, not anything fancy like this. This is a pair of shark fins and they're super expensive. Straight up and down. So how I use thinners is I use it to blend lines. Um, if I had taken my scissors and did the you know the majority of my work, with thinners or with scissors, but then it just there was some spots that weren't quite right. I can go in and soften lines. And notice the angles of which my scissors are being used up and down with the with the direction of the hair. Some of you maybe want a tip on you don't have clippers. A lot of you are gonna have problems right now getting clippers. I'm hearing that they're not even it's gonna take a month before they'll even arrive from Amazon. Um how would I suggest you cut hair at home? I would suggest you take your comb and you put it underneath your dog. What does that do? That creates a barrier so you're not cutting skin. I put this between and then I can see, you see sticky outies there? Yeah, I see sticky outies. So I take my scissors and I just cut the long stuff and I would go across my dog. Pick up the hair, cut some, hair, some length off. You're not, your first time, you're not going to be able to get this as even and nice as you want. But the purpose of the comb between the, you and the, do the dog and the scissors is so you don't go in and cut too far. So if that dog did move, I can't cut skin. <laughs> the mo as much as it sucks um, that I can't work and I can't do what you guys would like me to do and uh, being able to care for your dog's fur and your ear is, I think there's going to be a, a new appreciation for for what our job is um, many times over the years 
we just get called, oh, you're just a groomer. You're just a groomer. And I, trust me, I, we have a lot of clients that do have, have appreciated us for years. But I think a lot more of you are really finding out why some groomers have had conversations with you or your dog got shaved or and you didn't want it to. Now, customer service is important. I've always talked to my clients before I've had to do certain things, shaving them and whatnot. So if I hadn't had that conversation with you, more people would, would be mad or madder. But some of you still went home mad thinking I was fibbing. Uh, so I hope this brings a new appreciation to those of you um, realizing that our job is important. It's not essential according to the government and I, I, I agree with that. It's not, this, this is a luxury. This is something that, but we've all gotten used to it, right? We've gotten used to uh, someone being able to do this for us. People got dogs knowing that there's groomers out there that could take care of their dogs and so when you take that away it becomes, it becomes hard. It becomes um, you know, we don't want these dogs to suffer. We don't want them dirty. We don't want them matted. And so I understand why a lot of you think it should be an essential, but we're, we're, we're helping, uh, flatten the curve by keeping you guys home and, uh, hopefully you're bonding more with your pets trying to learn all this and no one's injuring their pets because of this, because it is a skill. It is a skill that... Not all of us go to school for. Groomers are not regulated here in, in Canada. I did go to school, um, but a lot of groomers took years before they got as good as they are. Uh, we have an act. We have a, a way with animals. Here, you want to not show your bum? <laughs> Jeez, I'm done with this bum. And a lot of us got into this because we love animals but this is a hard job it's hard on us um physically it's physically demanding and uh so i hope it brings a new appreciation to those uh groomers who have been underappreciated by some customers and uh we love your animals so we miss you and can't wait to start grooming again when it's safe. And I don't know what else to say today.